Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Top Gate. In this series of uh, operating system lectures, I will be discussing all the concepts of operating systems that is related to your university semester exams plus your preparation for competitive exams like uh, gate exams and, and so on. So let's start with the lecture. This lecture is about the introduction to operating systems. And in this uh, lecture, I'll be telling you the general definition of operating system as well as I'll be telling you the technical definition of operating system and I'll be telling you the goals, the functions, the responsibilities of the operating systems. If you ask me the definition of operating system, then the most general definition that I can give you is the operating system acts as an interface between the user and the hardware. That is, if the user wants to interact with the hardware of the machine, then the user cannot interact with the hardware directly. In fact, the user has to first interact with some intermediate node that is there in between the user and the hardware. And then this intermediate node will in turn interact with the hardware. So let's take an example of a car. Suppose, uh, suppose you have a car and the most important hardware in the car is the engine. That is, the engine is responsible for running the car and the user wants to interact with the engine. That is, the user wants to use the capabilities of the engine. So the user cannot use this engine directly. In fact, there is a proper interface provided in the car which can be used to interact with the engine of the car. That is, if the driver wants to run a car, as soon as he goes inside the car, there is a steering wheel, there is a gearbox, there is a pedal for a clutch, there is a uh, accelerator pedal, brake pedal. So all this is actually an interface to interact with the engine of the car. So if the driver wants to run a car, the car can be run using the interface provided in the car, that is the steering, the, the steering, the gearbox, the pedals and so on. So similarly, if the user wants to interact with the hardware of the computer system, then the user cannot interact with the hardware directly. In fact, the user can interact with the help of some intermediate nodes. So if you talk about the hardware of the computer system, the hardware is that we have are we have a, a CPU, we have a main memory, we have a secondary memory, like we have a RAM, we have a hard disk drive, we have a keyboard, mouse, printer, scanner, monitor. So if the user wants to interact with the hardware, if the user wants to use the capabilities of this hardware, the user cannot use the capabilities directly. In fact, the user has to first interact with some intermediate node and this intermediate node is provided by the operating system. So if we see this diagram, this diagram is actually explaining the major functionality of the operating system. That is, there are certain number of users who wants to interact with the hardware of the computer system. So these users are first interacting with the applications. Okay. And these applications are in turn interacting with the operating system. And this operating system is directly interacting with the hardware now. Clear? So, uh, if you talk about the applications, so what is the applications? So, like uh, whenever we switch on our machines, we have a Microsoft Office, we have a VLC media player, we have uh, uh, some other applications. So, all these are the applications which, with the help of which I can use the capabilities of the actual hardware of the machine. But these applications or the application softwares cannot interact with the hardware directly. In fact, if these application softwares or the application was to interact with the hardware, the first had, has to interact with the operating system. And this operating system is also cal called as the system software. So we have two things here. We have an application software, we have a system software. The difference between the application software and the system software is that the application software provides an interface for the user to interact with the system software. The application software cannot directly interact with the hardware. Clear? So the intermediate node between the operating system and the users is provided by the application software. Now, if we talk about the system software, this system software is actually a software which runs on the machine and this system software has the capability to interact with the hardware directly. And this system software provides an interface for the application software to interact with the hardware. 
clear so these application softwares basically run on the system software so the most important functionality of the operating system is that it provides an interface between the user and the hardware now this interface can either be a graphical user interface or it can be a command based user interface now if we go back to some say 30 40 years uh, say in the starting of the 90s the early 90s then uh, we used microsoft disk operating system in those times now what is that ms dos uh, this ms dos was a, a command based operating system that is if the user wants to interact with the hardware of the machine then the user has to interact with the help of issuing some commands so for everything we have command we have a command available so that command can be used to interact with the actual hardware of the machine clear and uh, in those times uh, almost 95 percent of the market was controlled by microsoft okay now after that uh, there were many companies which came into existence and uh, all these companies including this microsoft they started to work in providing convenience to the user so with the advancement of the operating systems the operating system that we are using today they are having graphical user interface that is uh, to interact with the hardware they are providing uh, certain graphics so we have proper graphics available to interact with the hardware of the machines and if we talk about the current scenario that is uh, i mean it was um, in the early 90s and 2000s and 2000 maybe 10 but uh, if we talk about the current scenario then we um, we can see that uh, this 95 percent got reduced from 95 to almost 70 percent okay so 70 uh, percent market is, is still captured by microsoft and remaining 30 percent is taken by other companies okay uh, so we have certain uh, operating systems available we have uh, like uh, if we talk about the microsoft we have uh, uh, we have dos initial and then we have uh, 98 we have uh, 2000 and then we have xp we have vista we have 7 and so on currently the operating system that we are using today is uh, windows 11 and there are many other operating systems like we have uh, linux also and uh, we have mac os also we have uh, i mean these are for the laptops and the desktops plus we have some other devices also like we have uh, for mobiles we have uh, android also we have uh, uh, ios for uh, apple iphones also so we have several uh, operating systems in use today and uh, the reason behind this 95 percent or 70 percent is that the microsoft was continuously working in providing convenience to the user so uh, i mean everything was very easy to use everything uh, where whatever we have to do that we can do it with with great ease and so on now if we talk about the more technical definition of operating system then i would say that operating system acts as a resource manager that is it acts as a resource manager Now, the first question that comes into our mind is what are the resources which the operating system is actually managing? So, uh, if we talk about the resources, then we have broadly classified the resources into four categories. The first category is the CPU, the second one is the main memory, the third one is the secondary memory, the fourth one is the input output devices. So, uh, it is the responsibility of the operating system to manage all these resources. Now, how does it manage all these resources? So, I'll tell you one by one all these resources and how this operating system manages all these resources. So, the first resource that we have is the CPU. Clear? So, CPU is, it is a central processing unit. So, if we talk about the CPU, the most important word in CPU is the processing. Now this processing comes from the word process and uh, before knowing what a process is, we must know what a program is. A program is actually a logical sequence of instructions to perform a certain task. That is, if we per uh, need to perform any task, then we need to write some logical sequence of instructions. For example, suppose I want to write a program for uh, adding two numbers. 
okay so for writing that program i will give some instructions so this instruction is actually uh, a logical sequence of instructions which is performing some tasks so that is the program okay but this program does nothing by itself that is if a user writes this program and the user saves it on to the hard disk drive then this program is not doing anything by itself so therefore we can say a program is a passive entity clear but as soon as this program gets executed by the cpu this program becomes a process so we can say a process is a program in execution or we can say a process is an active entity whereas a program is a passive entity which does nothing by itself now i said that as soon as the cpu starts executing this program now what does this word executing means so execution means the cpu only executes those programs which are uh, residing on to the main memory that means suppose there are certain users user 1 user 2 user 3 4 5 n number of users are there and they all are writing some programs and they all wants their programs to be executed clear so all these users submit their programs to the operating system and the operating system makes a queue of these processes and the it is the responsibility of the operating system to take one process from this queue and ask the cpu to start executing that process clear so uh, this operating system takes the process from the queue with the help of cpu scheduling algorithm so we have certain cpu scheduling algorithms available and it will use any of the algorithms to take one process from the queue and ask the cpu to start executing that process or the program clear so uh, this management is the responsibility of the operating system clear so we have a uh, um, i mean uh, a whole lot of concepts available uh, for this uh, cpu management so we'll discuss all those concepts one by one in the upcoming videos clear now the second resource that we have is the main memory management or we can say we have a ram the random access memory now i'll continue with the previous point only that is uh, i told you that uh, as soon as the program is executed by the cpu this program becomes the process the cpu only executes those programs which are residing on to the main memory now what i told you that if a user writes a program and this program is saved onto the hard disk and the hard disk is the secondary memory it is not the ram okay but cpu only executes those programs which are residing on to the main memory so as soon as this uh, operating system asks the cpu to start executing this program this program's data gets shifted from the secondary memory to the main memory as soon as it reaches the main memory the cpu will uh, execute that program from the main memory only so if there are n number of users available and all their programs have to be shifted from the secondary memory to the main memory there must be some management here so this management is done by the operating system only which is responsible for managing the ram of the machine clear now the third resource that we have is the secondary storage secondary storage and the operating system has to manage this secondary storage so it is secondary storage management suppose there are n number of users available and all they are writing the programs and these programs are getting saved onto the secondary storage fine now when this uh, cpu starts executing these programs these programs have to be shifted from the secondary storage to the main memory fine so the storage should be done in such a way that their retrieval should be made easy so it is the responsibility of the operating system to store these programs in such a way onto the hard disk so that their retrieval becomes easy 
so this is again a whole lot of concepts are there available for this uh, category also we'll discuss all these categories all these uh, concepts in the upcoming videos now the fourth one the last resource that we have is the input output devices clear so we have input output devices now what is the input device now input device are the devices which are used to take the input from the user suppose i write a program for adding two numbers and these two numbers will be taken from the user okay so the user is giving the input now this input will be given from the uh, keyboard clear so keyboard in this case will become the input device suppose we have a on screen display we have a uh, zero to nine numbers written on the screen and we are using the mouse for giving two numbers as the input so in this case the input is the mouse because we are using the mouse in this case fine so mouse can be the input device so keyboard the mouse all these are input devices or you can say the scanner also scanner is also an input device uh, what is the output device output device is actually used to print the output of the uh, of the program clear that is uh, we have a monitor so monitor is the output device that is you're displaying something okay printer we are printing something that is again output device fine if we talk about the second is store hard disk drive we have a hard disk drive available so this hard disk drive is a device which can be termed as an input device plus it can be termed as an output device also why suppose there is a program written for doing something and this program is residing onto the hard disk drive so i want to execute that program now so cpu as soon as this program uh, gets executed by the cpu the data of this program gets shifted from the main from the secondary memory to the main memory so in this case since the input that we are getting is the hard disk drive so it is the hard disk drive so input device can be the hard disk drive in this case now suppose the program is there and i am making some changes into that program as now after i have done all the changes i will save it where am i saving it i am saving it again it to the hard disk drive so the output that we are giving is to the hard disk drive so in this case hard disk drive can be your output device as well so this hard disk drive can be termed as an input device or the output device clear now to sum up operating system acts as a resource manager and it manages four resources the first resource is the cpu the second resource is the main memory third resource is the secondary memory fourth resource is the input output devices that is your technical definition and if we talk about the general definition the layman's definition then it says that operating system acts as an interface between the user and the hardware thank you so much